copyright 1998 Lucas Trust. 14. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. The point I would like to make here, before proceeding further, is that I shall seek to avoid, as far as possible, all technicalities. Art is the esoteric consideration of disease and its forms. It seeks to elucidate the subject of and the vital causes of such diseases, and to influence the general laws with which the healer must work and the six rules which he must impose upon himself, and to which he gives obedience through discipline and understanding. You will have noted that I listed the psychological causes under four headings. 1. Those arising out of the emotional feelings of the 2. Those which have their origin in the etheric body. 3. Those which are based on wrong thought. 4. The peculiar complaints and psychological troubles of disciples. It may have interested you to see that I place the ills of the etheric body in the second place and not the first. The reason for this is that the old ills and diseases which have fastened upon the race work primarily through the etheric body and find their way out into manifestation via the etheric bodies of all forms. But I have placed them second, even though they are in the last analysis the most numerous, owing to the fact that humanity cannot as yet deal with these en masse. The approach has to be through individuals, and men must clear their astral or emotional bodies of those conditions which predispose them to disease, as individuals. At present, the race is astrally polarized. The emotional sentient nature is all-powerful in the masses. This leads to a relatively negative etheric body which is tuned in on the entire etheric substance of the planet. This substance, which underlies all forms, is simply a transferring and transmitting agency for vital energy to the outer dense physical body. Energy sweeps through this etheric substance, free from all control by the individual human being, and quite unrealized by him because his focus of attention is astral. From the astral or emotional state of consciousness, much concerning individual physical conditions can be deduced. We must, however, eliminate those ills which are great ills and which have swept into and through all mankind from the world of etheric force, leaving him in some way depleted, or overstimulated, or in such a condition that death naturally supervenes. It might be stated as a basic generalization that personal physical trouble has its seat at present in the emotional body, and that that vehicle of expression is the one predominant predisposing agent in the ill health of the individual, just as group bills and the sweep of epidemics of any kind are founded in some condition in the etheric substance of the planet. Those diseases which are general, national, racial and planetary find their way to an individual via his etheric body, but are not so personal in their implications. Upon this I will later enlarge. Today I will lay down the general proposition. I would also like to point out that the diseases for the masses, for the average citizen, for the Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust 15 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Intelligentsia and for the disciples of the world may and do differ widely not so much in their expression as in their field of expression this is a point most difficult for the average viewer to recognize. It is not easy or possible for him to make these distinctions and debate the point in evolution which a man may have reached. 
some diseases must be dealt with from the mental plane, and will call in the mind of the healer. Others require a concentration of emotional energy by the healing agent. And again, in other cases, the For instance, to place himself in the hands of the average magnetic healer or radiatory worker, or psychological expert of any kind. The disciple dare not subject himself to the examinations of any chance healer, nor put himself in the power of the inexperienced academic psychologist, no matter how prominent he may be. He may, however, subject himself to the wise skill of the physical plane physician or surgeon, as, for him, the physical body is an automaton. He can therefore avail himself of physical means for its benefiting. Much of the failure of the healing methods at present employed consists in the inability of the healer to 1. Reach the extent of the trouble may be located basically, and in what body it principally arises and lies. 2. Know where the patient stands upon the ladder of evolution, and where, therefore, he must look first for the source of the difficulty. 3. Differentiate between the diseases which are due to interpersonal conditions, or to inherited diseases, or to distribution. To know whether the disease should be handled. A. Allopathically or homeopathically, for both can play their part at times, or through any of the other media of modern skill and science. B. Through radiation or magnetization, or both. C. Through right inner psychological adjustment, aided by true insight on the part of the healing agent. Through calling in the power of a man's own soul, a thing that is not possible except to advanced people. E. Through definite occult means, such as forming a healing triangle of. Copyright, copyright 1998 Moose's Trust. 16. A treatise on the seven rays, volume 4, Esoteric Healing. This method involves much knowledge and a high spiritual attainment on the part of the healer. It also presupposes the healer's link with the master and the master's group, plus the earned right to call upon that group for energy on behalf of the patient, a thing is then rarely granted. I would like first of all to point out that my purpose and intent is not to write a medical treatise. I shall not, therefore, deal with the anatomy of the body, nor shall I discuss the symptoms of diseases, except quite incidentally. I do not intend to elaborate symptoms or consider the many diseases with long names which distinguish disease at this time. All such information you can gather from the ordinary textbooks, if you so choose, and these you can study, if you care to do so. I find it personally not particularly satisfying. We will start with the premise that there is disease, that disease is an effect of the causes, that man has made his vast strides in the understanding of the effect of these causes as they produce changes in the outer garment of man, as science has made in the understanding of the outer garment of God, the world of phenomenal nature. The ameliorative and palliative and curative work of medicine and surgery are proof beyond all controversial discussion. The 
methods employed, such as the vivisection of animals, may rightly cause distress. In spite of all this, the indebtedness of mankind to the medical profession is great, and the service rendered to humanity by the profession does not offset the evil. That they know not everything is true, that there is a small percentage of physicians and surgeons less than in any other profession, who are self-seeking and no credit to their craft is equally true, that they already know enough to be willing to admit how very much more there is to be known is also correct. For he is a great and good and self-sacrificing who is within the human family, is equally true. Forget this not. I deal with the subjective aspect of man, and with the secondary causes which have their roots in man's inner bodies and in the subjective side of nature itself. The major primary causes, as I earlier explained, are impossible for you to grasp. They lie beyond the capacity of the concrete. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust 17. A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Mind I seek to make clear what man may do to free himself increasingly from the accumulation of the past, both individually and as a group, and in so doing to clear his physical body of the germs of disease. It must, however, be borne in mind that many diseases are of a good nature, and are consequently inherent in humanity itself. Just as the insect world devastates and destroys the vegetable kingdom, as any chance walker through the woods can note, so germs, individual and group, today devastate and destroy the human kingdom. They are agents of destruction and are performing a definite office and duty in the great scheme of things at present. The intent is for men to die, as every man has to die, at the demand of this own soul. When man has reached a higher stage in evolution, with the and definite choice of time, he will consciously withdraw from his physical body. It will be left silent and empty of the soul, devoid of light, yet sound and whole. It will then disintegrate, under the natural process, and its constituent atoms will pass back into the units, until they are again required for the use of incarnating souls. Again, on the subjective side of life, the process is repeated, but many have already learned to withdraw from the astral body without being subject to that. In fact, in the fog, which is the symbolic way of describing the death of a man upon the astral plane, he then withdraws onto the mental level and leaves his astral carcass to swell the fog and increase its density. I seek to point out, therefore, that my avoidance of medical technicalities will be deliberate, though we shall refer often to the physical body and to the diseases of which it is a prey. Secondly, I seek today to give you another of the laws of healing, as well as one of the rules for the healer. Study these with care. Law 2. Disease is the product of Subject to Influences First, a man's past, wherein he pays the price of ancient error. Second, his inheritance, wherein he shares with all mankind those tainted streams of energy which are of group origin. Thirdly, he shares with all the natural forms that the Lord of life imposes on his body. These three influences are called the ancient law of evil sharing. This must give place someday to that new law of ancient dominating in which lies behind all that God made. This law must be brought into activity by the spiritual will of man. What is a law, my brother? 
It is the imposition, upon both the lesser and the more important, of the will and purpose of that which is superlatively great. Therefore, it lies beyond man's ken. Man has some day to learn that all the laws of nature have their higher, counterparts, and of these we shall shortly be in search. All laws today are but secondary laws. They are the laws of group life and they govern the kingdoms of nature and find their expression for the human kingdom through the medium of the mind, of the emotional nature, and through a physical plane. Copyright Copyright 1998 Uses Trust 18. A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Agent, it is not my intention in this present short treatise to elucidate the primary laws. I but state them, and at a future time, dependent upon certain factors yet undeveloped, I may deal with them. In this treatise, the third part of it is stated to deal with the basic laws of healing. These deal not with the laws referred to above, but with the practical aspects of the healing art. The second rule of the healer is as follows. Rule 2. The healer must achieve magnetic purity through purity of life. He must attain the dispelling radiance which shows itself in every man when he has moved the centers in the head. When this magnetic field is established, the radiation too grows. The significance of this will be somewhat apparent to the advanced esoteric student. As you know, the magnetic field is established when the powerful vibration of the center in front of the pituitary body, and the center around and above the pineal gland, swing into each other. point in connection with the above rule, which we shall have later to consider, is how and in what manner magnetic purity is to be achieved, and how the two centers in the head can form together one magnetic field. Later, in our conclusion, which is intensely intensely practical, I will touch upon these two points. One of the things which should definitely emerge in our studies is the fact that disease is seldom of individual origin, unless a man misspends his life and definitely misuses his body through drink or sexual dissipation, and that the bulk of the disease to be found in the world today is almost entirely of group origin, is inherited, is the result of infection, or the result of undernourishment. The last name cause is primarily an evil of civilization, it is the result of economic maladjustment or the corruption of food. As I earlier pointed out, these latter causes of disease are not primarily the result of inner subtle forces, but are the pouring upwards, into the etheric body, of energies from the physical plane itself and from the outer world of forces. Little attention has been given by occult teachers to these forces which come from without, which originate upon the physical plane, and which affect the inner bodies. There are physical energy and streams of force entering into the etheric bodies of all forms, just as the world illusion and the miasmas of the astral plane oft have their causes in physical plane conditions. Energies entering into the centers of man from the subtler levels have oft been considered in occult books, but the forces which find their way into the centers from the world of physical plane life are seldom realized or discussed. This is a somewhat new thought which I offer for your consideration. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 19. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. I have asked AAB to insert a very brief synopsis of some of the points I have already made under the heading of what is disease. I suggest the following. 1. All 
diseases disharmony and lack of alignment and control. A. Diseases found in all the four kingdoms in nature. B. Diseases purificatory effect. C. Definite methods of healing superior to humanity and mental in origin. Diseases of fact in nature. A. Antagonism to disease simply energizes it. B. Disease is not the result of wrong human thought. 3. Disease is a process of liberation and the enemy of that static. 4. The law of cause and effect governs diseases as governs all else in manifestation. So that healing is brought about in three ways. 1. Through the application of the methods of the many schools of medicine and surgery and allied groups. 2. Through the use of psychology. 3. Through the activity of the soul. I have also stated that the major causes of disease are three in number. They are psychological in nature, they are inherited through group contact, and they are karmic. Remember, however, that these are the secondary causes and with the first of these we will now deal. 1. Causes arising in the emotional desire nature. In a treatise on white magic, I gave the world for the first time information as to the nature and the control of the astral body. This book is practically the first one ever given out to the public on this theme. Much has been given in the past on the subject of the physical body and its care, both by exoteric and esoteric science. Much of it is true, and some of it is illusion. It is illusion because it is based on false premises. The modern esotericists have dealt with the subject of the etheric body, and this too has been partially true and partially false, but it is more generally true. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 20. A Treatise on the Seven Seas Volume 4 Esoteric Healing from the occult point of view that it is exoterically. I may surprise you here if I tell you that a treatise on white magic is also true as far as it goes, but it is necessarily limited, and because of these limitations it is also partially incorrect. Does the above statement astonish you? Remember, how can it be entirely true when we consider the limitations of your power to comprehend? It is impossible for me to convey to you the truth, because there exists neither the terminology nor an adequate groundwork of knowledge on your part. This makes my task difficult. This teaching on healing is likewise the hardest I have yet undertaken, and this for two reasons. First, the real nature of the phrase, settler bodies, is somewhat meaningless, is it not? They are not bodies like the physical body. They can be regarded as centers or reservoirs of particular types of force, attached to each individual, possessing their proper inlets and outlets. They are collections of atoms vibrating at high speed and color, according to some schools of occultism, by certain definite hues, at a certain tone, and are at varying points of evolution. According to others, they are states of consciousness and some regard them as made in the likeness of a man. What is your definition, brother of mine? The astral body is, for the majority of mankind, the major determining factor to be considered. It is an outstanding cause of ill health. The reason for this is that it has a potent and predisposing effect upon the vital and etheric body. The physical body is an automaton of whichever inner body is the strongest. When you remember that the vital body is the recipient of the streams of energy, and is in fact composed and formed of such streams, and that the physical
physical body is driven into activity by these streams, it is apparent that that stream which is the most potent is the one which will control the action of the physical body upon the physical plane. However, two streams of energy which must be considered in studying the factors leading to physical plane actions. I will remind you in this connection that disease is an activity of the physical plane. 1. The stream of life itself, anchored in the heart, which determines the vitality of the man, his capacity for work, and the term of his existence. 2. The predominating stream of energy coming from the astral, mental and soul bodies. These control his expression upon the physical plane. With the masses of people throughout the world, and those whom we call the vast unthinking public, the dominating factors are the stream of life and the stream of astral or desire energy. This can be either of a low or medium caliber. With the thinking public, the dominating factors are these two streams, plus a steady inflow and an increasing tide of mental energy. With the intelligentsia of the world and the aspirant those ready for, are already on, the probationary path we find the above three streams reaching a point of equilibrium, and thus, copyright copyright 
kaleidoscopic mutable phenomenon. These bodies, so called, are rapid aggregates of atomic units, fade out and disappear, or flash again into manifestation. Streams of souls pass and recast, they twine or intertwine. Certain areas will then suddenly intensify their brightness and blaze forth. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucid Trust 22. A Jesus on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing With brilliance, or again they can be seen dying out in the phenomenon and certain areas will be colorless and apparently non-existent. There is a persistent overshadowing light, from which a stream of lights pours down into the phenomenal man. This can be seen attaching itself in two points to the dense inner core of the physical man. These two points of attachment are to be found in the head and in the heart. There can also be seen, dimly at first with an increasing brightness, seven other pale disks of light which are the early evidence of the seven centers. These centers, which constitute the quality aspects and the consciousness aspects, and whose function it is to color the appearance or outer expression of man and use it as a response apparatus, are during the evolutionary process subject to three types of unfoldment. A. As a physical plane child grows from an infant to a man. By the time he is 21, the centers should normally have reached the same quality of expression as they had attained when he passed out of life in a previous incarnation. The man then takes up life where he had previously left it off. B. The awakening of the centers through life experience. Occasionally only one center may be dealt with in any one life, sometimes several are brought into greater functioning consciousness. C. There is, finally, the awakening of these centers in the process of initiation. This of course only happens when the man is consciously upon the path. 5. The centers determine the man's point of evolution as far as his phenomenal expression is concerned. They work directly upon the physical body through the medium of the endocrine system. This point should be borne in mind, for the future occult healer will approach his patient with this knowledge. He will then work through those centers and glands which govern the particular area of the body wherein the disease or discomfort is located. The time, however, for this has not yet come, for man's ignorance is great. Overstimulation of the centers, and consequently of the glands, could easily be brought about, and the diseased condition might be. Copyright Copyright 1998 Versus Trust 23. A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Stimulated also and increased, instead of dissipated or healed. A. Uncontrolled and ill-regulated emotion. Given these basic facts, it can be seen how wrong emotional attitudes and a general unhealthy condition of the astral body must be important factors in producing discomfort and disease. This is due to the fact that the vital or etheric bodies of the masses of humanity are governed primarily and swept into activity through the action of the astral body. Agitation in that body, any violent activity or excessive temper, intense worry or prolonged irritation will pour a stream of astral energy into and through the solar plexus center, and will galvanize that center into a condition of intense disturbance. This next affects the stomach, the pancreas, the gall duct and bladder. at this particular time in the world's history, are free from 
indigestion, from undesirable gastric conditions, or from trouble connected with the gallbladder. The tendency to criticism, to violent dislikes, and to hatreds based on criticism or a superiority complex, produces much of the acidity from which the majority of people suffer. I would like to add in passing that I am here generalizing. So many people are prone to an inferiority complex in relation to themselves, but to a superiority complex where their relation to other people is concerned. Stomatic physical plane effects are closely tied up with the desire aspect of the physical body, which finds expression in the eating and drinking of that which is desired, leading subsequently to those attacks of biliousness to which so many are prone. I add these above illustrations to demonstrate the effect of the prevalent wrong attitudes to life and people which today distinguish mankind from these the above mentioned conditions. The ills which are based on criticism, upon hatred, and upon the capacity to judge each other usually unkindly from the throat center to the solar plexus. This interrelation existing between the centers is one that has never been properly considered. The centers in the etheric body pass varying kinds of energies amongst themselves, and a great deal of the energy transmitted from one center to another is undesirable, flowing from the centers below the diaphragm to those above. The physical body of etheric and dense can be pictured as a house with two telephonic installations, one bringing in energies from without the house and the other being in the nature of a house telephone from room to room. The analogy is far more accurate than appears to the casual thinker. In every modern house, light and water and gas and telephonic interchange are brought. Light, the symbol of the soul, water, the symbol of the emotions, telephonic. Interchange, the symbol of mind with its intercommunication of knowledges, and gas, the symbol of the etheric nature. Copyright, copyright 1998, Lucis Trust. 24. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4. Esoteric Healing Interesting and saddening to note that that which at present goes out of the average house is the refuse that is undesirable. This is the correspondence to that which is selfish and sad and the demand for the satisfaction of personal needs and desires. It can be seen, therefore, why I have so need of harmlessness upon all of you, for it is the scientific method, our excellence and esoterically speaking, of keeping house and of purifying the centers. Its practice clears the clogged channels and permits the entrance of the higher energies. The emotional causes of disease and the mental attitudes which produce physical discomfort are in this particular time those which are the most prevalent. persisted in over a long period of time, and are carried over from life to life, they cause the more violent aspects of the conditions referred to above, and when serious and destructive diseases can emerge, necessitating, for instance, the removal of the gallbladder or those operations incident to the appearance of chronic gastric ulcers. Other diseases grow from a constant pandering to the desire nature, though sexual diseases come under another category. It can be seen from the above how desirable it is that the true healer should combine in himself, not only a measure of esoteric knowledge, but, until he is an initiate, something of psychology, something of the work of a magnetic healer, and also be a trained medical man or surgeon. Much of the healing now done is worse than useless, because the three above mentioned conditions are lacking. Most doctors, especially those who are called general practitioners,
practitioners, are good psychologists and they have also a sound knowledge of symptoms and of anatomy and of curative measures which are usually lacking in the average metaphysical viewer. But they are entirely ignorant of one great field of knowledge, that concerning the energies which meet and war within the human frame and of the potencies which can be set in motion of certain esoteric groups are admitted in place. With the inherent body and study the science of the centers, they can make any further progress. The esoteric healer knows much about the inner forces and energies and has some understanding of the basic causes of the exoteric diseases, but his ignorance of man's mechanism is deplorable, and he fails to realize. out into manifestation of undesirable subjective conditions. These, when externalized and brought to the surface of the human body, can then be known, dealt with and eliminated. It is well to remember also that sometimes this working out and elimination may well bring about the death of that particular body. But the soul goes on. Short life counts for very little in the long cycle of the soul, and it is counted well worthwhile if a period of ill health, even if it eventuates in death, is about the clearing away of wrong emotional and mental conditions. Second, disease is sometimes incident upon and part of the process of the withdrawal of the soul from its habitation. This we call death, and it can come quickly and unexpectedly when the soul. Copyright Copyright 1998 Rufus Trust 25 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Withdraws with suddenness from its body Her death can spread itself over a long period of time and the soul may take several months or years for its slow and gradual emergence from the body, with the body dying by inches all the time. There is not sufficient knowledge yet among healers to enable them to deal with wisdom in these matters. We might therefore conclude that 1. Disease is a purificatory process, carried out in order to produce a pure expression, life aroma, influence and soul usefulness. When this is the case, a cure is possible. 2. Disease can be a gradual and slow process of dying and thus releasing the soul. Cure then will not be possible, though palliative and ameliorative measures are needed and should most certainly be used. The length of the life can be prolonged, but a permanent and final cure is out of the question. This the average mental group fails to realize. They make a horror out of death, whereas death is a beneficent friend. 3. Disease can be the sudden and final call to the body to relinquish the soul and set it down for other service. In all these cases everything possible should be done from the standpoint of modern medical and surgical science and the allied sciences of which there are today so many. Much more can be done from the angle of mental and spiritual healing, aided by the science of psychology. Someday there must come cooperation in these various fields in a synthesizing of their efforts. I have earlier pointed out that the astral body is the prime motivating factor in the lives of the souls. This is caused by the fact that 1. It is the body in which the bulk of human beings are today centering their consciousness. 2. It is the most developed of the bodies at this time, and therefore receives the bulk of the life energy as it comes down the life stream, and likewise receives the energy of the stream of consciousness. 3. 
It is oriented, if I may so express it, outwards or towards the plane of physical experience. That orientation shifts at times and, temporarily in the case of the aspirin, turns inward. Just as the centers in man, me, lotuses of life, are depicted as turned downwards and with the stock upwards in the undeveloped man, they are turned upwards in the case of the developed, so there are conditions in the astral body analogous to this. In the case of the highly evolved man, the initiate or the master, the astral body is steadily oriented towards the soul. In the mystic, the copyright copyright 1998 loses trust. 26. A treatise on the seven rays, volume 4, esoteric healing. Aspirant and the disciple, the process of thus definitely changing the direction of the forces is going on and producing, therefore, a temporary chaos. of man, being the latest to develop, the physical and the etheric being the first two in order of time, is still the most alive and potent. It reached its acme of development in late Atlantean days and its potency is still great, constituting the mass potency, the mass emphasis, and the mass polarization. This is also augmented by energies coming from the animal kingdom, which is entirely astral at this point of attainment. I would remind you here that the use of the word, body, is most misleading and unfortunate. It produces in the consciousness the idea of a defined form and a specific shape. The astral body is an aggregate of forces, into the consciousness in the form of desires, impulses, longings, wishes, determinations, incentives, and projections, thus laying the basis for much of the truth of the teachings of modern psychology. Psychologists have discovered, or rather uncovered, the nature of some of these forces, and their terminology in this connection is frequently more truly occult and accurate than is that of the orthodox esotericist and theosophist. It may be of interest to you if I do two things. First of all, give you some technical information in connection with the working through of the forces from the astral plane into the physical body and then give you the effects of that working through, as they take the form, owing to man's wrong use of them, of disease and the many varying disorders to which man is prone. With their cure we are not at this time concerned. I am here simply laying down the structure of fact upon which we can later base our conclusions. We shall, in this connection, only consider the average man. The problems of the disciple will be dealt with under part 1.4. I pointed out earlier that the three major groups of diseases for the cause of God. 1. Tuberculosis. 2. The social diseases, as they are called, the venereal diseases and syphilis. of disease which predominantly affect those who are a little above the average and whose general level of intelligence is higher than that of the mass. This includes also the aspirants of the world. 4. Heart diseases, but not what is called heart failure. 5. The nervous diseases so prevalent at this time. These five groups of disease, and their various subdivisions are responsible for the bulk of the physical ills which attack humanity. A right grasp of their preponderating causes will be of definite assistance to future medicine. How much will be accepted is at this time doubtful. Copyright Copyright 1998 Loses Trust 27 Copyright Copyright 1998 loses trust I would like to point out here that, as you well know, 
There are physical correspondences to the seven centers of forces located in the etheric body and fed from the astral body. These we call the endocrine glands. These glands are effects of our testifying evidence to the centers and are in their turn initiating causes of lesser effects in the physical body. It will be of value if we hear tabulate some of the things we know and aid comprehension. Center gland physical organs type of force in body 1. Head, pineal, upper brain, spiritual atma, causal body, Ramarandra, right eye synthetic, monad jewel in the 1000 petal, via soul lotus. Lotus Dynamic Occultus Initiate Master After Third Initiation Two Center Pituitary Lower Brain Soul Force Petals Lubic Between Body Left Eye Love A Controlled Vehicle The Eyes Nose Magnetic Lotus as causal ajna center nervous life. Body system. Intuition. Higher vision. Mental aspirant. Disciple. Mystic. Dominant after second initiation. Three. Heart. Thymus. Heart. Life force. Love. Fire. Anna had a circulatory group. Special system. Consciousness cause of blood. Also, body vagus nerve all types of spiritual people. Dominant after first initiation. 4. Throat. Thyroid. Breathing. Creative. Knowledge. Mental center apparatus energy. Petals body. Sensory sound. Canal self-consciousness creative artists. All advanced humanity. The intelligentsia. 5. Solar. Pancreas. Stomach. Liver. Astral force. Astral. Astral body. Plexus emotion. Centers gallbladder desire. Nervous touch. System average humanity. 4. Binary people. 6. Sacral. Gonads. Sex organs. Life force. Physical, etheric body, center, physical plane 28 a treatise on the seven rays, volume 6, esoteric healing. A treatise on the seven rays, volume 4, esoteric healing. Plane force, vital energy, animal life, low grade animal type of men. Seven, base. Adrenals, kidneys, energy, the spine, Uladhara, spinal, column, universal life, Kundalini, the mother, of the world. This tabulation is simply an outline and, like the tabulation of the principles and their correspondences, Columns to it and further correspondences. In all our considerations, what we have to say will have the following synthesis and structure behind it. 1. The soul. 2. The subtle bodies of the mind and the emotions, which are simply qualified energy centers. 3. The vital body with its seven major centers of force. 4. Endocrine system, which is an effect of the seven centers, and the determining controlling factor in the physical body of man. 5. The nervous system and its three divisions. 6. The bloodstream. All the subsidiary organs of man are effects, they are not predetermining causes. The determining causes of man, and that which makes him what he is, are the glands. They are externalizations of the types of force pouring through the etheric centers from the subtler modes of being. They express
express the point in evolution which the man has reached. They are vital and active or non-vital and inactive, according to the condition of the centers. They demonstrate a sufficiency, an oversufficiency or a deficiency, according to the condition of the etheric vortices. Again, the process of control may be stated to be via the nervous system, the close interlocking electorate of the nervous system, the brain and the bloodstream, as a carrier of the light principle governs the activities of the man, conscious, subconscious, subconscious, and finally, superconscious. The three centers in supreme control today for the majority are 1. The center, the center between the eyebrows. 2. The solar plexus. 3. The sacral center. Eventually, when man will have become that which he is, that paradoxical esoteric phrase, the centers of control will be. Copyright copyright 1998 Lucas Trust. 29. The Treatise on the Seven Rays. Volume 4. Esoteric Healing. 1. The Head Center. The Brahmarindra. 2. The Heart Center. 3. The Center at the Base of the Spine. Between the Present and the Future, the emphasis will be laid upon a constantly shifting triplicity, and each man will be different from his fellow men as to emphasis, as to the conditions of his centers, as to their vertical correspondences in the physical body, and therefore as to the diseases and the ill conditions and difficulties to which his flesh will fall heir. It is in this connection that it becomes obvious that the work of the physician and of the psychologist must eventually go hand in hand. The three most important aspects of all diagnoses are 1. The psychological, the engaging of the inner bodies of man from the angle of their development, their integration and the total coordination of the personality, as these subtler aspects of the human being express themselves in consciousness. 2. The work of the endocrinologist, as he deals with the endocrine glands, viewing them as power stations through which energy, dynamic and illuminating, can pour through from the centers. 3. The physician, taking into consideration the conclusions of the two above experts, diagnoses the disease, and treats it in collaboration with the other two. other experts and specialists in electrotherapy, osteopathy and chiropractic, but it is in the combination of the knowledge of the physician, the psychologist and the endocrinologist that the medical profession can take on a new expression of usefulness, and have the new age of put to deal with the people who will gradually assume the new types in a changing physical organism. Electricity in relation to human ills, this is yet an infant science, but it has in it the germs of the new techniques and methods of healing. The work done by the chiropractors is in the need of the good, with osteopathy, constitute a definite subsidiary technique to that of the other three. The work of the chiropractors and of the osteopaths forms two halves of one whole, little as their practitioners may like to recognize it. The former group need a more careful and lengthy training, and a higher standard of technical knowledge should be required. Medicine is entering slowly into a new usefulness. Once the cause of disease is shifted out of an organ or bodily system into a more subtle and vital realm, we shall see radical and needed changes, leading to simplification and not to a greater complexity and difficulty. From the above remarks it will be seen that disease emerges into the physical body from the world of the unseen, and from the use, and misuse, of the subtler forms.
forces on the inner planes. It must be remembered that disease, as it expresses itself in man, can be generally regarded as due to the following causes, and students will do well to have this most carefully in mind as they ponder on these matters. Copyright Copyright 4. Esoteric Healing 1. Individual Disease Due to interior conditions in a man's own equipment, to his mental state, or to an emotional condition which can produce serious ills. This is inherited from the past. 2. Disease inherent in humanity as a whole There are certain diseases to which all men are prone. The germs of these diseases are latent in the physical vehicles of the majority of men, only awaiting predisposing conditions in order to manifest. They might be regarded as group diseases. 3. Diseases which are, curiously enough, accidental. To these a man falls air when, for instance, he succumbs to some infectious or contagious complaint. Diseases inherent in the soil. Of these as yet the little is known. The soil of our earth, however, is very ancient, and is impregnated with disease germs which take their toll of the vegetable, animal and human kingdoms, manifesting differently in each, yet being due basically to the same causes. 5. Diseases which are the difficulties of mysticism. These are the peculiar ways which attack the disciples and aspirants of the world. These can be traced in every case to a pouring in of energy through centers which are not properly equipped or adequately developed to handle the force. The above is a generalization which may be found useful. The method whereby these astral forces, which are, as we know, preeminently the determining life forces for the majority of men at this time work out into manifestation as a relatively simple matter. In the astral vehicle of expression there are, as you may realize, the correspondence is the seven centers in the etheric body. These are essentially the seven major focal points of force, and each of them is expressive of one of the seven ray energies. Let me first of all make clear which centers express these seven ray types. Center 1. Head Center 2. Ajna Center 3. Heart Center 4. Throat Center 5. Solar Plexus 6. Sacral Center 7. Base of Spine Ray 1st 7. 2nd 5th 6th 3rd 4th Quality The Divine Will Organization Direction Love Wisdom Group Love Creativity Emotion Desire Reproduction Harmony Union through Conflict Origin, monotic, active, mental, astral, etheric, physical. Note, in the fourth kingdom, the human, it is the energy of the fourth ray which, cooperating with the first ray, eventually brings synthesis. There is a close relation between the highest center. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust 31 Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust, head center, and that is the base of the spine. This fourth type of energy thus expresses itself in cooperation with the first type of the civilization, our present Aryan race, which will, in cooperation
connection with the fifth principle of the mind will bring a shift into a higher level of consciousness. This will produce a harmonizing of all the centers through an act of the will, intellectually and intelligently applied, with the objective of producing harmony. This point warns thought. On the astral plane there will also be found in every astral body seven corresponding focal points through the brain for then into the vital centers in the etheric physical body is seven differentiated types of force. These types of force produce both bad and good effects, according to the quality of the negative dense physical body. Differ according to the type of ray or force. This may be interesting to hear indicate both the good and the bad effects in the corresponding diseases. Astral force center bad aspect disease good aspect first ray. Head self pity, cancer, sacredness, will or power, the dramatic eye, dedication of the eye, second heart self love, heart trouble. Soul love, love wisdom, personality, stomach trouble, group love, third ray, sacral sexuality, social diseases, parental love, activity, overactivity, group life, fourth ray Ajna selfishness, insanity, mysticism, harmony, dogmatism, fifth ray, throat lower psychism, wrong metabolism, creativity knowledge, certain cancers, sensitivity, inspiration sixth ray, solar plexus emotionalism, nervous diseases, aspiration, devotion, gastritis right direction, liver trouble, seventh ray, base of the self-interest, heart diseases, white magic, organization, Find pure selfishness, tumors, black magic. Please remember in studying this population that it is a generalization, and only a partial listing of the types of disease which can be the result of the inflow of energy. It is only intended to be suggestive. The complexity of the human equipment and the intricacy of the ray energy were such tea. Had no hard and fast rules to be laid down. The ray forces manifest differently, according to ray type and point in evolution. There is therefore no contradiction here to the previous tabulation. If you bear in mind that every human being is basically an expression of five ray forces, 32 A trains on the seven rays, volume 4, esoteric healing. A treatise on the seven rays, volume 4, esoteric healing. 1. The ray of the soul. 2. The ray of the personality. 3. The ray governing the mental body. Body. 4. The ray governing the astral equipment. 5. The ray of the physical nature. It will become apparent that for the average person two such tabulations would have to be drawn up. 1. There would be required the positive analysis of the astral forces as they express the personality. 2. An analysis of the soul forces as they are faintly indicated. A negative analysis concerning what is not present in the equipment can be of little value here. It will again be necessary to have an analysis of the forces playing through into the physical body from the astral plane, which are received directly from the soul and are therefore a combination of soul force plus the highest type of astral energy. This will be in the nature of a synthetic analysis and would only be possible in the case of a disciple or an initiate. You will therefore eventually have for each person 1. A positive analysis of the personality forces, primarily of the astral force as that is the 
predominating force pouring into the etheric centers. 2. A negative analysis of those aspects of soul energy which are not present. 3. A synthetic analysis, based on both the above, but combining also the record of positive soul expression. In these tabulations and statements I have given you much food for thought. P. Desire, inhibited or rampant. It would be of value to you here if I made clear that one of the first things a student has to remember is that, for the majority of human beings, for the huge majority, the influences and impulses which emanate from the astral plane are a predisposing factor in all matters with which the individual concerns himself, apart from those conditions which are being imposed upon him from his environment and the period in which he lives are, for him, unavoidable. The astral plane is a center of dynamic emanating force, which is fundamentally conditioning in its effect because of the stage of the individual consciousness in which that majority finds itself. Men are swayed by the impulse of desire of a higher low caliber. This is, of course, a broad generalization, for that basic condition is becoming steadily modified by impulses coming from the mental plane. Complicates the problem. Influences emanating from the soul. Copyright, copyright 1998 versus Trust. 33. A Treatise on the Seven Rays. Volume 4. Esoteric Healing. Are also becoming. Problem of complication, if I might so call it, constitutes a hard saying for the student to understand in relation to his physical condition or to that of anyone whom he may be seeking to help. I should like here, in this connection, to give you the third of the laws which govern the sacred art of healing. Law 3. Diseases are an effect of the basic centralization of a man's life energy. On the plane whereon those energies are focused, precede those determining conditions which produce ill health, and which, therefore, work out as disease or as freedom from disease. It will be apparent to you, therefore, that a shift of the inner attention, the mental attitude, an intensification of those reactions which produce discomfort, disease or death. In the three laws which I have given you and which you now have before you for consideration, it is obvious that the following facts emerge. These should be the basis of your reflection. 1. Disease is the result of the blocking of the free flow of the life of the soul. the forces emanating from that plane whereon a man's consciousness is primarily centered. To the above statements should be added a further fact, already mentioned, that 4. There are five major groups of diseases, with their allied complaints and subsidiary diseases. A. Tuberculosis. B. The Cancer. D. Heart difficulties. E. Nervous diseases. I am not divided.
providing what I have to say into organic and functional trebles, nor do I do refer to copyright copyright 1998 Lisa's Trust. 34 A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. Illnesses induced by epidemics or by accidents. I refer to those basic teas or predispositions that are the dubious heritage of humanity as a whole, and to those difficulties which are incident in those stages in evolutionary development which are characteristic of those upon the more advanced stages of the path. It will be seen, therefore, that man comes into incarnation having inherited predispositions to disease which come. From his own past, i.e., effects of the result of causes initiated in earlier incarnations. 2. From the general racial heritage of humanity. 3. From the condition of the planetary life. These latter causes lift the whole problem out of the usual comprehension of the average man. predisposed to trouble if he has succeeded, as a result of a long evolutionary history, and awakening in some fashion, however slight, the centers above the diaphragm. The moment that that occurs he becomes subject, for a long cycle of lives, to difficulties connected with the heart or with the nervous system in its various branches. An advanced human being, such as an aspirant or a disciple, may have freed himself from the inherited genes, but will succumb to heart trouble, to nervous disorders, mental imbalance, and overstimulation. They are classified occasionally as the diseases of the mystics. I would like to make it clear that it is not my intention to enter into the realm of physiological discussion, to elaborate the symptoms of disease, or to deal with the lesions, the pathological conditions, and the distressing details attendant upon the breakdown of any human organism. going to write a treatise on anatomy or on the various sciences which have grown up from a study of the mechanism of the human being, connected as the world of the framework and structure, the organs, nerves, brain tissue and intracellular systems which compose the intricate piece of machinery, the human body. As far as the exoteric science is concerned, two things would successfully deter me. The whole subject is marvelously dealt with in the many books which embody the literature of medicine and of surgery. There is little that I could add which would be of profit in such a discussion as this. 2. The readers of my words are not, with few exceptions, versed in the construction and constitution of the human body, and pathological details, the description of diseases, and the various unpleasant symptoms of human degeneration or unwholesome reading for the average man or woman. A little knowledge along these lines can be a most dangerous thing. I seek to deal primarily with causes, with the inner sources of disease and deal with those states of consciousness, I do not say states of mind only, which induce wrong functioning, and eventually wrong conditions. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust 35 A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing Difficulty lies above or below the diaphragm. This takes him definitely into the realm of occult as well as of psychological knowledge. Secondly, he must have a clear grasp of the patient's inner emphasis. This last aid is the diagnosis of the first. This statement brings me to the formulation of the third rule for healers.
Rule 3. Let the healer train himself to know the inner stage of thought or of desire of the one who seeks his help. He can thereby know the source from which the trouble comes. Let him relate the cause and the effect, and know the point exactly through which relief must come. I would like to call your attention to those last few words, and would emphasize to you the fact that disease primarily is an effort on the part of the natural physical body to seek relief and achieve release from inner pressures, from subjective inhibitions and hidden retentions. Primarily, from the point of view of esotericism, all physical disease is the result of 1. Wrong stimulation, or overstimulation, or wrongfully placed stimulation and of inner tensions and in not part of the mechanism. 2. Inhibitions, psychical starvation, and those accumulated subjective forces which damn the flow of the life forces. You will see, therefore, that again, in the domain of health, all problems resolve themselves into the rightness and the correct handling of force, in order to affect the free flow of energy. The following questions will inevitably arise. From whence come these inherited taints? Is it possible to arrive at their source? The problem of the past, and the present effects of that past, is too vast for consideration, nor can any statement cement the situation possibly help humanity. One generalization I can, however, make, and even that may convey a little to your understanding. Of the two major diseases which have been inherited from the past, it might be said that the syphilitic or so-called social diseases are remainders of the excesses indulged in in Lemurian times. They are of such ancient origin that the very soil is permeated with the germs of these diseases, a fact quite unknown to modern science. upon its development, its use and control, and also upon its perpetuation or reproduction. It was in Lemurian times that troubles connected with the misuse of the sex life. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust 36 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing misinterpreted testimony to this effect, and when men can read the records more correctly than the right interpretation, they will understand the way out, because they will see more clearly the underlying causes. Cancer is a gift to modern man from the Atlantean humanity, and the scourge of this disease was the major factor which devastated the inhabitants of old Atlantis. The roots of this dire evil are deep-seated in the emotional or desire nature, and are grounded in the astral body. Cancer is partially the result of a reaction to the diseases connected with the sex life which became so rampant in later Lemurian times and early Atlantean days. and the extent of the disease that grew up out of the fertile Lemurian life, resulting from the promiscuous sex life on every hand, for the sake of self-preservation damned back the natural flow of desire, the flow of life as it expresses itself through the centers of reproduction and procreation, and this in due time produced other evils. Cancer is primarily a disease of inhibition, 
just as in syphilitic diseases are those of overexpression and overuse in one aspect of the mechanism of man. Today, owing to the vast reaches of man involved and to the untold generations of those who have died upon the earth, the germs, so called by the unlearned thinker, of the dread complaint of cancer are to be found in the very soil on which we live, infecting the vegetable kingdom and also the human family. A correspondence to the syphilitic complaint of man are to be found in the mineral kingdom. Tuberculosis, which was devastatingly rampant at a certain stage in Atlantean times, is nevertheless a disease which has been generated principally in our Aryan race, and one which we are bequeathing to the animal kingdom and are sharing with them. This is beginning to be realized. So close, however, is the relation between men and animals, particularly the domestic animals, that they today share with men and all his ailments in some form or another recognizable and sometimes not. Honestly enough, the cause of this great white scourge is to be found in the fact of the shift of the life emphasis away from the emotional nature into that of the mind nature, producing a temporary starvation of the emotional nature. It is largely a disease of depletion. Cancer, in its turn, life force from the physical body into that of the emotional nature, producing an overdevelopment of the cellular life through overstimulation. I realize the difficulty of grasping these statements. I can only give you these unsubstantiated hints. Later discoveries alone can prove the truth of my suggestions. Let us here tabulate our conclusions. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust 37 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Disease Rays Body Kingdom Organ Syphilitic Lemurian Physical Mineral Sex Organs Sacral Center Cancer Atlantean Astral Vegetable, solar plexus, tuberculosis, Aryan, mental, animal, apparatus, nerve center. In returning above to the center, I am referring to the center for the distribution of the life force, wherein the emphasis for the mass will be found. From the above, it will be apparent where the emphasis of the possible cure will have to lie. Already, because it is the latest, and therefore the least deep seated of the three major diseases inherited by modern man, we have learned how to cure tuberculosis. It has been discovered when the mind was intelligently applied to that problem that sunshine and good food can cure, or at any rate arrest the disease. It is an interesting item in the esoteric correspondence that just as the light of the soul, pouring into the mind, can be depended upon to solve any problem, so the light of the sun and its prophylactic rays can dispel the dread symptoms of tuberculosis. Similarly, as the race develops right emotional control we shall see the gradual disappearance of the phenomena of cancer. I said right emotional control, inhibition and the suppression of the desire impulses by the force of the will is not right control. It is interesting also to note that though both men and women suffer from the disease of cancer, the general cause is not identical, but the basic cause reaction from an overexpression of the sex life to the cultivation of the desire nature remains the same. Women, due to the risks they run in childbirth, through the turning of the life emphasis to the sex aspect,
aspect of life, have revolted on a large scale, as did the Atlanteans against this form of life expression, and it is along this line, the sex line, that their major inhibitions are found. They do not suffer so much from the general inhibition of the desire feeling expression. Men who suffer from this latter inhibition and have a tradition or a marked tendency to greater emotional control in the handling of life than have women. Men do not require or acquire so marked a sex control. In the general field of their inhibited tendency is therefore of greater extent, and consequently, if statistics can be trusted, more men suffer from cancer than do women, though it is a dread disease, feared by all. In the secret of right transmutation lies the cure of cancer, and this will eventually be realized. I am using this phrase not only symbolically but also technically and scientifically. This again will later be seen. In the secret of right rhythmic living and in a right proportional accent upon all phases of life will come, and it is rapidly coming complete immunity from tuberculosis. Of right understanding of times and cycles and of periodic reproductive creation will come the emergence of the race from the evils of the social diseases. It will be apparent to you, therefore, that the syphilitic diseases will be the last to disappear, just as they were the first to devastate the race. Tuberculosis is disappearing. The attention of the experts is now being given to the cure of cancer. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust 38 The Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing I would like to add one or two comments which will be of general or rather modern interest. I have said that these taints to which humanity is prone are found in the soil, and that their presence there is largely due to the burial, down the ages, of millions of corpses. By the increased use of the process of information, this condition will be steadily improved. Gradually, very gradually, the taint will thus die out. It is therefore highly desirable that there be as much propaganda as possible for the use of this method of disposing of the discarded physical vehicles of the souls who are passing through this incarnation. As the soil becomes less tainted, and as soul contact is established, we can hope to see a steady decrease in the number of those who succumb to the inherited taints. Curiously enough, the free use of salt sea bathing has a definite effect on the healthiness of the physical body. The water, incidentally absorbed through the medium of the skin and by the mouth, has a vitally prophylactic effect. One of the major problems today to the psychologist and in a lesser degree to the medical man, is the growth of homosexuality, both female and male. Specious arguments are brought forth in order to prove that this abnormal development, and the consequent interest in this morbid tendency, is due to the fact that the race is slowly becoming androgynous in its development, and that the future hermaphroditic man or woman is gradually making its appearance. This, again, is not true. Homosexuality is what you call a leftover from the sexual excesses of Lemurian times, an inherited taint, if you like. Egos who individualized and incarnated in that vast period of time are the ones who today demonstrate homosexual tendencies. In those days, so urgent was the sexual appetite, the normal processes of human intercourse did not satisfy the insatiable desire of the advanced man of the period. Soul force, flowing in through the processes of individualization, served to stimulate the lowest centers. Hence, for 
winning methods were practiced. Those who thus practiced them are today, in great numbers, in incarnation, and the ancient habits are too strong for them. They are now far enough advanced upon the evolutionary path so that the cure lies ready at this point, if they choose to employ it. They can, with relative ease, transfer the sex impulse to the third center, and thus become creative in the higher sense, employing the energy sensed and circulating in right and constructive ways. Many of them are beginning automatically to do this. However, it is well known that, among the so-called artistic types, homosexuality is very prevalent. I say, so-called, for the truly creative artist is not the victim of these ancient evil predisposing habits. It might be pointed out here that homosexuality is of three kinds. One, that which is the result of ancient evil habits. This is the major cause today and indicates a individualization upon this planet. For those who individualized upon the moon chain are not susceptible to these dangerous characteristics. B. A relatively advanced stage upon the evolutionary path which was achieved by the Lemurian egos who succumbed to this desire satisfaction. C. A consequent study of sex magic, plus a constant insatiable physical and sexual urge. Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust. 39. A Treatise on the Seven Rays. Volume 4. Esoteric Healing. 2. Imitative Homosexuality. A number of persons of all classes imitated their betters, if I might use so paradoxical and so the delicate habits in sexual intercourse from which they might otherwise have remained free. This is one of the prevalent reasons today, among many men and women, and is based upon a too active imagination, plus a powerful physical or sex nature, and a prurient curiosity. This I say with advisement. This category accounts for many of our sodomites and lesbians. 3. A few rare, very rare, cases of hermaphroditism. These people, combining in themselves both aspects of the sex life, are faced with a very real problem. It is a problem which is greatly increased by human ignorance, human refusal to face facts, wrong early training and teaching, and a widespread misunderstanding. These cases are to be found in small numbers everywhere, even though their numbers, in relation to the world population, is still negligible. But that they exist is of real interest to the medical profession and a subject of deep pity and commiseration to the humanitarian and the understanding psychologist. They face a difficult situation. I have somewhat elaborated this matter as it is of use for you to discuss facts and the information is of value to you. It serves to throw light upon a problem which an increasingly large number of people are called upon to face. Psychologists, social workers, physicians, and all those occupied with group training constantly meet with this problem, and it is just as well that some distinction is made between the types which must be considered, thus clarifying the issue. Two. Find in these instructions many hints which, though they may not be classified definitely as instructions in healing, may fall into that category, but you will make those of you who read more efficient in understanding. You will note also from the above how this taint, as might well be expected, has its roots in the astral or sentient body, the body of sensation. It is for this reason that I have included it.
It would be an interesting experiment in analysis of these various well-known difficulties, diseases and complaints could be classified under their originating impulses. So few of them have a mental origin, in spite of all that Christian science or mental science may say to the contrary. Perhaps I should say, rather, that they are not based on non-human thought, though all evil can be aggravated and intensified by wrong thought. Many or perhaps most of the complaints from which average man suffers are based upon natural causes or upon some clearly defined desire. A formulated desire is one that finds expression in some form of activity. Of these homosexuality is one of the clearest to define. The other diseases to which humanity is heir are sometimes not so easy to clarify and define. The man or woman is a victim but the cause producing the illness or difficulty, physical or psychological, lies hidden in long past which the victim with his limited knowledge is unable to investigate, nor can he arrive at the cause producing the effect. All that he can affirm is that, in all probability, desire was the initiating impulse. Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust. 40. A Treatise on the Seven Rays. Volume 4. Esoteric Healing. Long and well established habits. Such habits are inevitably the result of one of two factors. 1. Desire. Dominating and controlling action. 4. 2. Mental control which substitutes for desire a planned campaign which will run counter in many cases to the normally sensed, defined desire. You will note from the above that it is my wish that you grasp the importance of the emotional sentient body and its power to initiate those secondary causes which, in this life, demonstrate as disease. Consequently the emphasis I have laid upon the astral body as a promoter of wrong physical conditions, and the necessity for astral understanding and control on the part of the patient, if there is to be a true overcoming of disease. Will you understand me if I say that the true overcoming may mean an acceptance of the way of death as the way out? Should it come near to restore healing, if the causes which are the initial impulses are exhausted? Ponder on this. In all the above, even in connection with what I have said concerning homosexuality, I have considered either rampant or inhibited desire, but I have only considered it in general terms and in a If I point out to you that where desire is inhibited, which is the case with many aspirants today, all kinds of diseases, cancer, congestion of the lungs and certain liver complaints, become possible, as well as the dread malady of tuberculosis. The diseases of inhibition are numerous and serious, as you will note from the above enumeration. It should be noted that where desire is rampant and uncontrolled and no inhibition is present, such diseases as the syphilitic disorders, homosexuality and inflammations and fevers appear. According to the temperament so will be the types of disease, and the temperament is dependent upon the ray quality. People on the different rays are predisposed to certain disorders. The psychologists are right in their basic differentiation of human beings into the two major types, extroverts and introverts. These two types produce their own qualities of disease, which demonstrate as ill health through overexpression or inhibition. We have considered our second point under the healing of diseases which arise in the emotional and desire nature. 
first point deals with uncontrolled emotion. I would remind you of our premise that we would only consider the ills to which advanced humanity, the aspirants and disciples of all degrees are prone. We will not deal, in this short treatise, with the whole gamut of diseases which affect humanity as a whole, or down the ages. The more advanced the aspirant, the greater probability there is that the diseases from which he suffers will be pronounced and powerfully demonstrating, on account of the inflow to a greater or less degree of the stimulating force of the soul. Subsidiary to the five major groups of diseases to which I earlier referred, is working out in connection with them in the human brain, or Copyright 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 1998 Lucis Trust 41 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Symptoms which are loosely covered by the disease congested areas, plus general debility and the auto-intoxication which lies behind so many symptoms. I would have to remember this with care and bear steadily in mind that I am here only generalizing, but this generalization is basic and therefore of importance. C. Diseases of worry and irritation. The third category of complaints which arise in the emotional or astral body is synthesized esoterically under the term, diseases of irritation. These are the insidious poisons which lurk behind the phenomena of disease. It might be said that all diseases can be covered by two definitions, from the standpoint of occultism. One. Diseases which are the result of auto-intoxication. These are the most general. 2. Diseases which are the result of irritation. These are very common among disciples. We hear much today about auto-intoxication, and many efforts are made to cure this by diet and the regulation of the life in terms of rhythmic living. All this is good and of help, but it does not constitute a basic cure, as its protagonists would lead us to believe. Irritation is a basic psychological complaint and has its roots in the intensification of the astral body, which definitely produces abnormal effects upon the nervous system. It is a disease of self-interest, of self-sufficiency, and of self-satisfaction. Again, I would say, ponder on these terms, for these three aspects of irritation are of general discovery. We will therefore deal with irritation, and peril, as it is called by exponents of the first ray, such as the Master M. We have nearly completed our first section of the heading psychological causes of disease and have very briefly, yet I believe suggestively, considered those problems which arise from the overactivity and wrong condition of the astral body. All I can do in this short treatise is to generalize, because most of the statements I make are, in any case, so new and revolutionary from the standpoint of orthodox medicine, that it will take time for even this first inner structure of ideas and this somewhat new formulation of truth to make its impact upon the thinkers of the race. Then, if accepted as hypothetical possibilities by the open-minded among them, a long period of time must elapse before there has been enough investigation, leading to definitely formulated conclusions, which will make the ideas of popular recognition and use. In saying this, I am not reflecting critically upon the medical profession. The money-grasping specialists and the charlatan are rare, they of course exist, as do the corrupt and the undesirable in every profession. Where are they not to be found? The closed minds are many, but again, where are they not found? The pioneers along
along the new lines of a man who has grasped some of the new age concepts have often used closed minds and see nothing but the new ways, modes and methods, and throw overboard all the old, losing much thereby. The Medical Copyright Copyright 1998 Uses Trust 42 and most beautiful records in the world of its purpose and field of activity, and has developed some of the greatest of the soul qualities, self-sacrifice, compassion and service. But the ways and the techniques of the new age are hard to grasp. Much of the old ways have to be given up and much sacrificed before the new art of healing becomes possible. The subtle bodies is properly recognized by the world thinkers, and their existence is established through a right and true science of psychology and the development of the faculty of clairvoyance. The tracing of the causes of disease back to the subtler bodies is relatively meaningless. The best reaction which the most open minded physician can, I say, can and not the producer admit is that the psychological of the patient to either help or hinder. Many are already admitting that. That is, in itself as much. When, therefore, I say that cancer, for instance, has its roots in a astral condition and began its career in Atlantean time, it means but little to the average man today. That large numbers of people today are Atlantean in their consciousness. I want briefly to touch upon the most common of all causes of trouble, worry, and irritation. They are more prevalent at this time than ever before, and for the following reasons. One, the world situation is such, the problems and uncertainty are such, that scarcely a person in the is exempt. Everyone is more or less involved in the planetary situation. 2. The intercommunication between people has each other as never before. If one member suffers, all the members suffer with it, is a statement of truth, ancient but new in application and today realized for the first time. 3. The increased sensitivity of the human mechanism is also such that men, tune in, on each other's emotional conditions and mental attitudes in a new and more potent manner. fellow men with whom they may be on the floor. 4. Telepathically, and also with a developed sense of provision, men are today adding the difficulties that belong to someone else, or to some other group of thinkers and their people, to the difficulties that may be. It is not sure that they will be. These problems will demonstrate to you how intensely difficult it is for men to face up to life. It will be obvious that the problems of worry and irritation called by the Master Moria, Imperial. Copyright Copyright 1998 Uses Trust 43 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing why are these difficulties of the astral body so perilous and so serious? Worry and irritation are dangerous because 1. They lower the vitality of the man to such a point that he becomes susceptible to disease. 
The scourge of influence has its roots in fear and worry, and once the world settles down to freedom from the present, fearful of its condition, we shall see the disease die out. 2. They are so highly infectious from the astral point of view that they lower in a peculiar manner the astral atmosphere, and thus make it hard for humans, in the astral sense, to breathe freely. today that they might be regarded as epidemic, in a planetary sense. 4. Because irritation I speak not here of worry, is inflammatory in its effects, and inflammation is hard to bear, and leads to much difficulty. It is interesting to note that certain forms of eye trouble are caused by this. 5. Because worry and irritation prevent true vision, they shut out the view. The man who is the victim of these conditions sees nothing but the cause of his complaints and is so submerged through self-pity, self-consideration, or in a focused negative condition, that his vision is narrowed and his growth hindered. Remember that there is group selfishness as well as individual selfishness. Sufficient reasons for the effects of worry and irritation to demonstrate to you the wideness of the difficulty. It is not much use at this time to talk of the remedy. One does not say to an influenza patient, when the worst throes of the disease are upon them, there is nothing the matter. That is fortunate, for it is not true. Things are not well and humanity and the planetary life are not well. This, the hierarchy knows, and is working for the amelioration of the conditions. When the throes of the planetary influenza are over and the patient will not die, then investigation can be made and effort produced which can prevent a recurrence. All that can be done is to keep the patient quiet and also keep the fever down. This is the work of the new group of world servers and the intelligent men of goodwill. Their name is Legion. 2. Causes arising in the etheric body. It will be wise for you to bear in mind that I am not here going to deal with those causes which. Copyright Copyright 44. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. Producing effects in the physical body, arise in the brain or in the astral body. Necessarily they pass through the etheric body. The etheric body is a transmitter of all energies to the physical body, and all types of force pass through to different parts of the physical form, producing good and bad results, negative or positive results, as the case may be. This is a fact which we accept. I am here considering the diseases, problems and physical difficulties which arise in the etheric body itself and work out in its relations to the physical body. These are quite widespread and usual. It is essential that you keep these two lines of force activity clearly differentiated in your mind. Both pass through and from the etheric body into the physical body, but only one of them originates in or is concerned with difficulties which have an etheric origin. The etheric body is a body composed entirely of lines of force and of points where these lines of force cross each other and thus form two crossing centers of energy. Where many such lines of force cross each other, you have a larger center of energy, and where great streams of energy meet and cross, as 
they do in the head and up the spine, you have seven senses. There are seven such, plus 21 lesser centers and 49 smaller centers known to the esotericists. However, we will confine ourselves at this time to the etheric body as a whole and to the seven major centers. It might be of interest to you, nevertheless, to be told where the 21 minor centers are to be found. They can be located at the following points. There are two of them in front of the ears close to where the jaw bones are connected. There are two of them just above the two breasts. There is one where the breast is close to the thyroid gland. This, with the two breast centers, makes a triangle of force. There are two, one each in the palms of the hands. There are two, one each in the soles of the feet. There are two, just behind the ears. There are two also connected with the gonads. There is one close to the liver. There is one connected with the stomach. It is related, therefore, to the solar plexus, but is not identical with it. There are two connected with the spleen. These form one another's realities, with such a center is formed by the two being superimposed one on the other. There are two, one at the back of each knee. There is one powerful center which is closely connected with the vagus nerve. This is most potent and is regarded by some schools of appreciation as a major center. It is not in the spine, but is no great distance from the thymus gland. There is one which is close to the solar plexus, and relates it to the center at the base of the spine, thus making a triangle of the sacral center, the solar plexus, and the center at the base of the spine. Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust. 45. A Treatise on the Seven Rays. Volume 4. Esoteric Healing. The two triangles referred to in this tabulation are of real importance. One is above the center below the diaphragm. It is of course apparent that where there is a free flow of force through the etheric body into the dense physical body there will be less likelihood of disease or sickness. There may, however, be increased tendency to difficulties arising from overstimulation and the consequent results of overactivity of the nervous system, with all the attendant problems. These forces, seeking inlet into the dense vehicle, are emanations from three directions, if I may use such a term. 1. From the personality vehicles, the astral and mental body. 2. From the soul, if contact, recognized or unrecognized, has been established. 3. From the environing world to which the vehicles of the soul and of the personality have acted as doors of entrance. Incidentally, in connection with this last case, I would call your attention to a possible relation between these doors of entrance and the phrase door of initiation. In the case where these centers through which the inflowing energy from these sources of supply flow, are quiescent, unawakened and only functioning partially or too slowly. As far as their vibratory rhythm is concerned then you will have a condition of blocking. This will produce congestion in the etheric vehicle, and consequent and subsequent difficulties in the functioning of the physical body. One of the most common of these is congestion of the lungs, though it may be exoterically traced to certain and definite physical causes, is in reality those causes, plus an inner condition of etheric congestion. 
It is the bringing together of the outer apparent cause and the apparent inner true cause which is responsible for the outbreak of the trouble. When these two conditions are brought into conjunction with each other, and you have a physical handicap and an apparent situation which is undesirable, then you will have disease, illness, or weakness of some kind. Every outer congestion can always be traced to these two causes, an inner and an outer cause. In these cases, the outer cause is not an effect of the individual inner cause, which is interesting. You will note, therefore, that all ills are not purely subjective or psychological in origin as far as an individual is concerned, but are sometimes both exoteric and esoteric. Hence the complication of the problem. The above statement opens up the whole question of the activity of the seven centers of force in the etheric body. Regarded as dormant or unawakened, awakening but only as yet sluggishly alive, or functioning normally, which means that some of the energies which produce the form of the center are moving rhythmically, and are therefore receptive to the flow, while others are still entirely inactive and unresponsive. Other centers will be fully active, and therefore predominantly attractive to any inflowing forces, still others will be not partially so. For the majority of people, the centers below the diaphragm are more active than those above the diaphragm, I am referring here to the 7 major centers and not to the 21 minor. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 46 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Centers For aspirants, centers below the diaphragm are active and the heart and throat centers are slowly coming into activity, while in the case of disciples, the Ajna Center, plus those centers below the body, are rapidly awakening. In the initiate, the head center is coming into vibrant activity, thus swinging all the centers into real and coordinated rhythm. Each patient or human being, being on some ray, responds differently, the time factor also differs, the pattern of the unfoldment varies, and the response to the inflowing forces is slightly differentiated. All of this we will consider with due care when we deal with Chapter 9, which concerns itself with the seven modes of healing. I simply mention it here so as to lay the foundation for what must later be considered, and thus for you have a whole question of the relation of the etheric body to the physical body is connected with the problem of healing. It will be apparent, therefore, how important it is, before real healing can take place, that the healer should know the point in relation reached by the patient, and should also know his ray type, both personality and egoic. If to this you add some knowledge of his astrological inclinations and indications, a far more accurate diagnosis can be produced. The key to all release either through the physical cure of disease or through death lies in the understanding of the condition of the centers in the etheric body. These determine the rate of the bodily vibratory activity and the general responsiveness of the physical body. They even condition the activity and accuracy of the instinctual nature and its relation to the outer plane lies in the fullness and general health of the sympathetic nervous system. A. Congestion Much real difficulty can be traced to congestion or to the lack of the free play of the forces. In this connection it might be pointed out that the etheric body is a mechanism for intake and dissolving. There is consequently a curious and intimate relation between it and such organs as the lungs, the stomach, and the kidneys. The symbology 
mere present, when correctly understood, will tend to show that there is a deep underlying esoteric relation between the mind and the lungs. The process of breathing, with its stages of inhalation, the interlude, and exhalation, works out in connection with both aspects of force, mental and physical. Two, the desire nature in the stomach. Here again is the process of intake, of assimilation, and of elimination. Three, the etheric body itself and the kidneys, with the processes clearly defined in both cases of absorption, chemicalization, and transmission. There is no symbol so relatively accurate to the whole creative process as the human brain. Congestion in the etheric body, producing much distress in the physical body, can exist. Therefore, at the point of intake from the astral body or from the astral plane, no phrasing in the difference. Or at the point of outlet, in relation to the center to the particular type. Copyright, copyright 1998 loses trust. 47. A treatise on the seven rays. Volume 4. Esoteric healing etheric force most easily flows and through which it most easily passes. Where there is a flow between the etheric body and the astral body, you will have trouble. Where there is no free flow between the etheric body and the physical body, involving also the nerve ganglia and the endocrine system, you will also have trouble. Close relation between the seven major centers and the seven major glands of the physical system must never be forgotten. The two systems form one close interlocking directorate, with the glands and their functions determined by the condition of the etheric centers. These, in their turn, are conditioned by the point in evolution and gained experience in the incarnate soul by the specific polarization of the soul in incarnation and by the race personality and soul of the man. Forget not that the five aspects of man as he functions in the three worlds are determined by certain ray forces who have the ray of the soul, the ray of the personality, and the rays of the mental, the astral and the physical bodies. All these will, in the coming new age, be definitely considered and discovered, and this knowledge will reveal to the ear the probable condition of the centers, the order of their awakening, and their individual ideas of knower notes. The new medical science will be outstandingly built upon the science of the centers, and upon this knowledge all diagnosis and possible cure will be based. The endocrinologist is only beginning to glimpse possibilities, and much that he is now considering has in the of future The balancing of the glands in the system, and the relation of the glands to the bloodstream, and also to character and predispositions of many kinds, are considerations of real value and worth following. Much, however, remains to be discovered in order to be really safe to work with the glands, making them a major subject of attention, as someday will be the case in all forms of illness. Throughout this short treatise I will give many hints which will serve to guide the open-minded investigator in the right direction. on to the consideration of the relation of the etheric body, as a unit, to the physical body, I would like to point out that I place the complications of congestion first upon the list of diseases arising in the etheric body, because it is at this time, and will be for a couple of centuries, the major cause of difficulty for the bulk of humanity or of those people whom we esoterically call, sacral people. This is partly due to the age 
challenge long habits of suppression and of inhibition which the race, as a whole, has developed. It is this congestion at the point of intake and about the etheric body which is responsible for the impeding of the free flow of the life force, with the results of a rapid succumbing to diseases. Hence, also, you will see how carefully assigned breathing exercises, with their subtle effects of reorganizing and readjusting the subtler bodies, particularly the astral bodies, will become more and more generally used. The widespread interest in breathing today evidences a subjective recognition of this fact, though not enough is yet known about methods and effects. One other thing I would like to call to your attention is that the point of congestion may exist either in the astral body center or in the etheric body, and this situation the healer will have to investigate. Copyright Copyright 1998 Moose's Trust 48. A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4. Esoteric Healing Come now to a brief consideration of our second point of difficulty to be found in the etheric body, which in our tabulation we have called lack of coordination or integration. This is exceedingly prevalent today and is responsible for a good deal of trouble. The etheric body is the inner, substantial, form upon which the physical body is built or constructed. scaffold in which underlies every part of the whole outer man, it is the framework which sustains the whole, it is that upon which the outer man is patterned, and it is the network of nadis infinitely intricate which constitutes the counterpart or the intricate aspect of the entire nervous system which forms such an important part of the human mechanism. It is thus definitely, with the bloodstream, the instrument of the life force. If, therefore, there is weakness in the relation between this inner structure and the outer form, it will be immediately apparent to you that real difficulty is bound to supervene. This difficulty will take three forms. 1. The physical form in its dense aspect is too loosely connected with the etheric form or counterpart. This leads to a legalized and debilitated condition, which predisposes man to sickness or ill health. 2. The connection is poor in certain directions or aspects of the equipment. Through certain focal points or centers the life force cannot adequately flow. of the physical body. For instance, impotence is such a difficulty and a tendency to laryngitis is another, to mention two widely different disorders. Three. The connection can also be so basically loose and poor that the soul has very little hold upon its vehicle for outer manifestation, and obsession or possession is easily established. This is an extreme example of the difficulties incident to this condition. Others are certain forms of fainting or loss of consciousness and fatigue now. There are also, as will be apparent, the exactly reverse conditions when the etheric body is so closely knit or integrated with the personality, whether it is of a highly evolved nature or simply an example of an ordinary etheric body, that every part of the physical body is in a constant condition of stimulation, of organic effort, with the resultant activity in the nervous system which, if not correctly regulated, can lead to a great deal of distress. It is to this that I refer in the third heading, overstimulation of the centers. Connection or too close a connection leads to trouble, where the first kind of difficulty is usually more serious than the others. 
I have here given enough to show how interesting and how important a study of the etheric body may be. The whole theme of healing is, tied up, to use a modern phrase which I find difficult with the development of mind and control of the seven major centers. C. Overstimulation of the centers. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust 49 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Much that I could add to what I have said on the cause of disease arising in the etheric body, but in part 2 when dealing with the section on certain basic requirements, I shall elaborate the theme much further. Congestion, lack of integration and overstimulation of the centers are obviously fundamental causes as far as the dense physical body is concerned, but they themselves are frequently effects of subtler causes, even in the life of the astral and mental bodies and, in the case of overstimulation, the results sometimes of soul contacts. The etheric body reacts. subtler vehicles. It is essentially a transmitter and not an originator and it is only the limitations of the observer remaining to ascribe the causes of bodily ills to the etheric body. It is a clearinghouse for all the forces of the physical body, provided the point in evolution has brought the various force centers to a condition wherein they are receptive to any particular type of force. Esoterically speaking, the centers can be in one of five conditions or states of being. These can be described in the following terms. One, closed, still and shut, and yet with signs of life, silent and full of deep inertia. Two, opening, unsealed, and faintly tinged with color, the life pulses. Three, quickened, alive, alert in two directions, the two small windows open wide. Four, radiant and reaching forth with vibrant note to all related centers. Five, blended they are and each with each works rhythmically. The vital force flows through from all the planes. The world stands open wide. The world is five stages, wherein the etheric body expands and becomes the vital livingness of all expression upon the physical plane. Are the five races of men, beginning with the Lemurian race, the five planes of human and superhuman expression, the five stages of consciousness and the various other groupings of five groups meet in the esoteric philosophy. Incidentally it might be of value and of interest to point out that the five-pointed star is not only the sign and symbol of initiation and finally perfected man, but it is also the basic symbol of the etheric body and of the five centers which control the life of man. The two head centers, the heart center, the throat center and the center at the base of the spine. When these centers are fully awakened and functioning in right rhythm with each other, the various quintuplets to which I have referred above form an integral part of the consciousness of the perfected man. Though this particular piece of information is not definitely related to the science of healing, yet the entire subject is related to energy and energy in some form or another is related to the causes and the effects of disease, because disease is the undesirable effect of energy upon the energy unit which we call the atom. It should be remembered that the etheric body of the human being is an integral part of the etheric body of the planetary logos and is, therefore, related to all forms found within that body in any and all the kingdoms in nature. It is part of the substance of the universe, coordinated with. Copyright 
copyright 
condition which is the fruitful source of those difficulties which, when carried down into the physical body, produce disease of various kinds, the many tensions and congestions, overstimulation of the centers in one part of the etheric vehicle and their underdevelopment in another, plus the unequal unfoldment and wrong balance of the centers. Today in modern medical investigation and in the imbalance of the endocrine glands and many physical difficulties are ascribed to this frequent imbalance. But behind this condition of the glandular system lies the basic imbalance of the centers themselves. Only when there is a right understanding of force and its reception and consequent use, will right balance be achieved and the human endocrine system control the physical man in the manner that is intended. There is much need today for the study of the following problems. 1. The problem of the right reception of force through the appropriate center. This might be found in the correct control of the solar plexus center as the one in which astral sensitivity can be registered and properly handled. 2. The problem of the right relation of a particular center to its related gland, permitting the free play of the force pouring through the center to the allied glandular correspondence, thus conditioning its peculiar hormone and eventually conditioning the bloodstream. If you grasp this sequence of contact, you will understand more clearly the occult significance of the words in the Old Testament that, the blood is the light. It is the vitality coming from the etheric body which works through into the bloodstream, via the center which is responsive to one of the seven peculiar types of force, and its allied gland. Therefore, that there is a close relation between a. The etheric body is a transmitter of a vast aggregate of energies and forces. b. The endocrine system whose various glands are in reality the externalization or materialization of the center, major and minor. c. The heart, which is the center of life, is the brain is the center of consciousness. From the heart, the blood circulates and is controlled. Thus these three great systems are related. The entire glandular system to the nervous system through the medium of the network of nerves and the nadis, which underlie this network. These nadis are the threads of life force which underlie every part of the body and particularly the nervous system in all its aspects. To these problems and relationships another might be added. This is the interrelation which must be established between all the centers, permitting the free play of force and correct rhythm throughout the physical vehicle. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucis Trust 52 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing You have, therefore, certain great interlocking directorates which control or fail to control the physical body. Where there is lack of control it is due to the failure to establish right relations within the body, or to lack of development. These interlocking groups are 1. That of the etheric body, which works primarily through its seven major centers but also through many other centers. 2. That of the endocrine system, which works primarily through the seven major glandular groups, but also through many other less important glands. 3. That of the nervous system, the sympathetic and the cerebrospinal, with a peculiar emphasis laid upon the vagus nerve with its effect upon the heart and consequently upon the bloodstream. All these points have to be considered and correlated in any system of occult healing, and the technical matter is in the last analysis.
process, less intricate than the vast system built up by orthodox medicine and surgery. It is because of the lack of coordination of these three systems that the healing art is at this time failing to achieve all that it desires. It has done much, but must move another there is pain before the real cure of the disease and its cure can be ascertained. For instance, lack of vitality and the common subnormal conditions with which we are so familiar indicate the inertia of the etheric body and its lack of vitality. of the vital body can be both physical and psychological, because the glands in the physical body will not function normally and, as is well known, they condition the physical expression of man as well as his emotional and mental states, in so far as those are able or not able to find expression through the medium of the physical vehicle. The glands do not condition the inner man or his states of consciousness, but they can and do prevent those inner states finding manifestation outwardly. In the reverse situation, too powerful an etheric body and the overstimulation of the center's condition may put too great a strain upon the nervous system and produce, as a consequence, definite nervous trouble, migraine, mental and emotional imbalance and, in some cases, lead to insanity. I have elaborated this matter somewhat because the relation of the etheric body to the physical body and its receptivity to the inner energies most decidedly condition the man. It will be necessary for us to have this ever in mind as we study the causes of the diseases arising in the mental body, due to the activity of the soul in the life of the disciple, or as we investigate the processes whereby a man is prepared for initiation. The etheric body must always, and invariably does, act as the transmitting agent of the inner energies to the outer plane, and the physical body has to learn to respond to and recognize that which is transmitted. The effectiveness of the transmission and the resultant physical activity depend always upon the centers, which, in their copyright, copyright 1998 uses trust. 53. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. Turn, Condition the Lands, These, Later, Determine the Nature and the Expressed Consciousness of the Man. If the centers are awakened and receptive, there will be found a physical apparatus which will be responsive to the forces flowing through. If the centers are asleep, and thus little force can be transmitted, you will find a physical apparatus which will be equally slow and unresponsive. If the centers below the diaphragm are awakened and those above are not, you will have a man whose consciousness will be focused in the animal and the emotional natures, and much of his physical disease will lie below the diaphragm also. Therefore, how intricate and complex this whole matter is. So complex that it will only be fully understood when human beings regain the lost power to see the light of the etheric body and its seven major centers 